big drink from that mug. And we're back with the RoboCop review, the first episode in this series of the greatest classic action movies according to the internet. RoboCop. I've got it in this trilogy pack. Uh, none of these have really any special features on it. I'm hoping eventually to get the Criterion DVD of this and the um, uh, the MGM Blu-ray because uh, I think I'd at least like to see the first movie with the special features and stuff. Um, I think it could be really cool. I think there there might be some really good commentaries on there. I could I forget, but regardless, RoboCop is the way that we start off. RoboCop's one that's kind of in the middle of the list um, or kind of in the uh, upper third of the list. And I don't know if I necessarily agree with that. I'm just going to give you a little preview there. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it being in the upper third. By the way, this is what it looks like outside of the slip case. That's probably what I'll mostly hold up here. But I do think RoboCop is one that if you're an action fan, it's almost a necessity. Um, first off, let's go through really quick and hit the big, finer points of RoboCop. Um, first off, we've got the story. The story is of this cop named Murphy. He joins a force in um, uh, this sort of futuristic Detroit, gets killed, and then is resurrected into RoboCop. Uh, RoboCop has a lot of commentary on consumerism and capitalism, uh, specifically on sort of like corporate overtake of government positions. Um, that's kind of interesting, and that definitely has to do with the fact that uh, he becomes RoboCop. RoboCop is, in essence, a product, and they're trying to make the product more important than the man inside of him. But let's also hit sort of um, uh, after the story point, let's go into sort of these other finer points here. Body count. This is, I've got to total this up. This is, a, this is a lot. 25, 27, 30, 140, 172. I think it's 172 deaths either mentioned or shown on screen or implied in this movie. Ton of a body count. Really huge body count. So, uh, 172 body count. Nakedness, three. You see a number of um, uh, male males uh, from their, with, with their behinds, which is just kind of ridiculous. Naked butox, as uh, Joe Bob Briggs would say. And then one instance of breast nudity. Uh, kind of takes away from the movie, but it's really not focused on. I kind of like that. Uh, car chases, two. There's one in which um, Murphy, before he becomes RoboCop, and his uh, his partner, played by Karen Allen, I think. Is it Nancy Allen or Karen Allen? I can't remember. Anyway, her, him and his partner are chasing them, and uh, this is this is a really good car chase, really exciting. Um, got a lot of gunslinging in there. And there's also a car chase uh, between um, his partner after he's become RoboCop and uh, the villains again. So we've got that going on. Really cool car chases. Uh, zero training montages. That's, that's a little bit of a negative there as well. Uh, fist fights. Three fist fights. Some of them not really including much of fists. Mostly um, like impromptu weapons and stuff like that, throwing stuff at each other, but there are fist fights in here as well. I kind of like that. Bullet slingers, instances where there are guns featured in any kind of substantial amount, 15, actually 16 on here. 16 bullet slingers. Unique fights and weapons, Ed 209, this thing that is shown on the back, if I can find it, right here. 
Ed 209, sort of Robocop before Robocop. And then Robocop himself. In essence, he's a weapon. Um, let's see. A uh, hero moment. Killing the Ed 209. I think that was just, that's a fun, cool moment where he, uh, shoots this military-grade weapon at, uh, Ed 209 and just destroys it. It's, it's kind of finally showing Robocop overcomes this sort of lower, lower mechanical being. And then, the greatest quote, Dead or alive, you are coming with me. Really, really cool line. All right, as far as everything else, we've got some good acting in the movie, just to start off with acting. Um, Peter Weller does very well as RoboCop. Sometimes he's a little bit too wooden, but sometimes that works because, well, he's supposed to be a robot, but he is kind of wooden because uh, before he becomes RoboCop, he just kind of doesn't work for me for whatever reason. I don't know why, just for whatever reason, he doesn't work for me. There's not a whole lot of emotion there. Uh, he says his lines sort of um, like he's phoning a man in a way. And then once he becomes RoboCop, for whatever reason, that woodenness starts to work. And he has this sort of way of using his mouth to create expression. These small glimpses of his eyes when he's got his visor sort of broken and everything. That's kind of cool. It's got some, some cool stuff there. Um... His partner, played by either Karen or Nancy Allen, I can't remember her name. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> Blanket here. But very un very unprofessional of me. I apologize. But I think she's... I, I don't think it's her finest moment. She's just sort of in the background there, and she doesn't do the best job for whatever reason. I just... I'm not a fan of, uh, of her acting in this. Um, I think it's more a, a sort of... A symptom of not really great writing on their part for her as opposed it is as opposed to it being her problem but anyway I don't think it's very good here um, let's see Dan O'Hurley he's in this I like Dan O'Hurley he in it very much um, let's see um, yeah but the villains are great there's a ton of really good, um, uh, just like sleazy characters in here that, uh, that just make you absolutely dislike them a hundred percent. Just really, really jerky people. Um, that's really good as far as the acting's concerned. A lot of really good character actors in here, noticeable faces, some from even, uh, my favorite, one of my favorite TV shows, Twin Peaks. As far as the directing, uh, I like Paul Verhoeven as a director. Um, his style is very energetic and highly stylized. Got a lot of um, sort of uh, really good cinematography in here as well. Really good camera movements. Uh, very fluid. The editing also is very fluid and uh, works well with that cinematography. I don't know if that's an just like the editors and the cinematographers, or if that's Paul Verhoeven. I kind of like to think it's sort of a mixture of both. Um, but yeah, I like the directing style, the cinematography, and the editing in here. The effects are really good in this movie as far as the makeup effects and the gore effects. Um, really good, very realistic, and this movie is just bloody as heck. Uh, there's also a scene where a guy gets toxic waste dumped on him, and he looks so messed up. Really, really good effects there as well. However, a lot of the stop-motion effects that they have to use for the ED-209 and even some of the, like, RoboCop costume, is it's a little dicey. Um, I think they're a little bit dated as far as that's concerned. Um, as far as writing is concerned, I think it's sort of a mixed bag. The plot is okay. Um, the characters... Some of some are really good. Some are not very good. RoboCop's great. Um, I think uh, Murphy himself is ve per pretty well written. Uh, a lot of the villains are pretty well written as well. But there, there's also a few that just sort of only stand out to me. I think because of good character acting. 
Uh, there is some really good dialogue in here, some dialogue that's a little dicey. The one-liners are great, but yeah, it's a little dicey for me as far as writing. As far as any other elements, let's see. Uh, the recognizable character actors I've said before are great. Uh, sorry, I'm looking at my notes here. Um, the score is a little bit forgettable, but it, it does kind of... It reminds me of itself when I first watched the movie, but it's it's not something that's going to get stuck in your head. Um, uh, some good one-liners. Uh, the commercials that they had in, in here are really cool. Uh, and some of the little fake TV programs. I'll buy that for a dollar. That's funny. That's some funny stuff. As far as rewatchability, this is maybe... This is... Kind of got some cheese factor, got some good gore effects, and uh, some of the sort of dated special effects make it kind of fun to watch. You can kind of make fun of it in that way. Um, the thematic elements are sort of still relevant today, this sort of um, commentary on consumerism and corporatism. That's, that's still relevant today, and sometimes I think that helps with rewatchability. As far as uh, anything else, there's a good, cool directing style, some good dialogue, some fun characters. Um, I think it's fairly rewatchable. Overall, I think it's a, uh, a good movie, some great characters, some good dialogue, and some cinematography that's really good, some editing that's pretty good. Um, but there's some stuff that really dates it, makes it kind of stale, and kind of leaves a bad taste in the mouth. Um, as far as the nudity, I'm, I'm not a fan of that, but it does kind of detract it. Uh, that takes off a little bit for me. Um, <laughs> uh, the absence of a, a training montage doesn't kind of kind of makes me mad. Not really. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'd give it about three stars out of five or about a six out of ten. Uh, I'll give it a three stars. Uh, I'd say buy it for cheap if you can find it. Um, a lot of the, a lot of pawn shops carry a lot of editions of this. I think, uh, as far as my experience goes, as far as manhood is concerned, and this is sort of maybe going to be the part of the video where you decide to turn it off or you stay around for sort of commentary on manhood. What I wrote down here is that it it doesn't. Robocop puts little to no value on the lives of um, those not so close to Murphy. Um, there's a little bit of value given to his wife and child who are still alive and he's um, unable to reconnect with them. You feel sorry for him as far as that. There's even a little bit of emotion, like I said, that um, Paul, not Paul Verhoeven, sorry, um, Peter Weller does with his mouth that I, I think sort of helps your idea of him as an emotional being. But still, I have to say, mostly like Robocop himself, this is sort of an emotionless movie. Either you hate people uh, because they're so sleazy or evil or just terrible or whatever, or they're just kind of there. It's sort of a really stoic take on masculinity uh, as far as Robocop himself is concerned, and I would say sort of the same thing with a lot of other characters here, too. Um, this, this is a movie more about things, I think, and material than it is about people, and I think that really shows. That kind of makes the thematic element sort of fall short for me. This is not a movie I go to to learn about the human condition or manhood in general. This is a movie that I go to um, really for just kind of fun. Uh, if I want something sort of on in the background, or if I want to laugh at something, if I want to have, uh, if, if I want to, you know, have some friends over and watch a fun action movie, this is what I would show. Uh, this is one that I would definitely have to show to people. But at the same time, it's not a deep movie. Uh, it's got some depth as far as the economic uh, stuff is concerned, but besides that, really there's not a whole lot to this movie in as far as talking about people. So I'm just going to leave it at that. There's not a whole lot of 
manliness as far as talking about manhood or anything like that. So, there you go. Three out of five stars. I recommend it for a good time. Buy it for cheap. I got this three-pack at Hastings before Hastings closed on Black Friday for about nine bucks. I thought it was a good buy. Um, I might like to buy a different Blu-ray of the first movie. If I rewatch the second and third and like them, I might buy the new Scream Factory editions if I've got the cash. But um, not the best, not the worst, but fun. So rock on. If you like, subscribe. Talk to you later. Bye.